Hello. Welcome to our June 7th worship. I had really deeply desired to bring to you a, a live recording, or a recording, I should say, of our live gathered worship this morning. And uh, another technical glitch, I managed to not record the video during the service. So I'm reprising now the more important parts, I hope, for, for your worship at home. And I deeply apologize that I do not have the video of our first gathered worship since March. And by next week, I will figure out the technical stuff that was wrong, although I fear today it was operator-induced error. In other words, I think I goofed, but I'm not sure how. So uh, we will work on that. Our call to worship this morning, after we greeted one another through masks with a wave, was from Psalm 9. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. The Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He judges the world with righteousness. He judges the peoples with equity. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the peoples. Our prayer for gathering. God of mercy and grace, Gather us now here as sin-sick children who need the healing touch of your holy word and the gospel of your Son. Convict us of our ailments of heart and soul and grant us the sure knowledge of the healing that is to be found in your ways. Bless the gathering, those who are gathered, and the household of faith you have provided for us. In the name of Jesus we gather. Amen. In our time of prayers, we had a number of folks to remember. We remembered Paul Schaefer's son, Michael, and Michael's husband, Aaron, out in California. Aaron has suffered for a while with mental illness, and this time of COVID-19 has not made life any easier for him. He is in the hospital. And because of all of the technicalities of uh, medical rules and whatnot, uh, Michael can't visit right now with the COVID going on, and they can't even give him much information about how it's going for Aaron. So ju just as we pray for folks with physical ailments, so too we pray for mental wellness, for mental healing. And with this time of COVID, you've heard me ask before, watch out for one another, please very carefully, especially at this time with the isolation, the extra stresses, and now the other things going on in our culture and society. Watch out for each other, and if you think you feel the despair, you feel the pain coming on, by all means, please give one of us a call. Give a sister or brother a call and let us talk. We do have a blessing or two to celebrate as well. Alice Shaw had an ablation last Monday at Mass General against atrial fibrillation. The procedure went very well, went very smoothly. We'll find out if it worked over the coming weeks because it takes a little while for ablation to settle down, even with the procedure. Class of 2020 has celebrated their graduation with parades and some virtual graduation ceremonies that uh, Kathy participated or, or watched yesterday from a school district she used to work in. And uh, we had a parade here in Princeton while the Wachusett School District had a, the grand route of the five towns. It was quite a parade. And last Thursday, our church was well represented out in our parking lot for the Sutton High School graduation parade. So to all of the seniors, congratulations and all of God's blessings on whatever it is that you seek to come next in your lives. We look forward to watching you through it. 
Uh, Kathy's Aunt Kay has been in and out of the hospital with UTIs and hydration, which for an older woman are, are challenging. Uh, we ask that you keep her and all of those who are in hospital care, nursing home care, other care settings in, in special prayer at this time. Todd Mitchell's mother is in the hospital. We ask that you keep her in prayer. A friend named Joanne is in the hospital on a ventilator, and we ask that you keep her in prayer, that God grant the strength and healing to bring her from that. And Deanne Norrie's mother passed, and Janet Stockhouse passed on Memorial Day. We ask that you keep families that know loss and grief in prayer, that God fill that void of grief with memories of love, confidence in the fulfillment of his promises, please. Join me in home in prayer with whatever you have to add in the ways of your deepest gratitude and your, your highest hopes and perhaps your greatest needs and those for others. Gracious God, Father Almighty and Creator in the heavens, yet merciful and gracious, ever-loving Father in our lives, Brother, Redeemer, Savior, Jesus Christ, inspiring, empowering Holy Spirit that grants gifts of service to the church. We ask that you watch over this household of faith, gathered or at home, venturing out or keeping safe at home. Keep us safe together. Help us to take good care of one another. Watch over, we pray, Aaron, continue to grant Alice strength and healing, and then Kay, for Deanna and her family, for Janet's family, for Todd's mother, for strength and healing, for Joanne on the ventilator. Thanks for the class of 2020 and all they have ahead of them. <clears throat> We do ask your prayers, your, our prayers to you for all who still suffer the isolation, anxiety, and loss because of the, the viral pandemic. For the family in Minneapolis who've known loss and all who suffer the, the violent loss of family, especially due to actions that appear to come out of, of such prejudice in our country. For former officer Chauvin and all who bear the burden of having taken life in a sinful way, guide them to repentance and seeking forgiveness from God, those whom they've hurt and those who entrusted them with a badge. We ask your strength, guidance, and wisdom for all who seek to keep the peace and enforce the law. May the great ones give example and teaching. The good ones learn from them. The bad ones be weeded out swiftly and thoroughly. For all who know the humiliation, frustration, and even rage fostered by our own bigotry, Lord, grant endurance, peace, and healing. And heal that which causes them all of those things. Grant us the ability to see one another as you see us and to treat each other accordingly. And for all who seek advantage and power from the bad circumstances around us. Lord, we ask that you change their hearts and frustrate their intentions. Bless our household of faith and the community in which we serve. Help us to continue to be a clear beacon of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Love from you, for you, and for one another. We lift all our prayers in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray together as he has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Mm. 
at this time in worship this morning, we did not pass the offering plates, but rather made them available for those who wanted to put a gift in them so that we didn't hand things to one another any more than we had to. You have, of course, the opportunity to the church at the mailing address of 307 Boston Road in Sutton, 01590. The PayPal link that's on our church website. Or as you're able to get out and about to come and join us in our uh, modified setting of worship this coming Sunday, it went smoothly as could be expected and probably even better this morning, except for somebody's video issues. Uh, so come and join us. But in any rate, uh, as God blesses us, let us bless one another through the service of his church and enriching them. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless the gifts and those who give them. Using both, we pray, in your service and to your glory. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Scripture lessons for this Sunday were chosen from uh, first the, Paul's letter to the Philippians in the second chapter. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has, ex has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And from Paul's letter to the churches at Ephesus, from the fourth chapter, Therefore, Paul writes, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. And the gospel reading for today was from the Gospel according to Matthew, in chapter 22. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, we ask your blessing on the reading and the hearing of your holy word. Amen. <clears throat> this is Trinity Sunday, and while I want to talk about some other things a little bit, they will be based in a triad, a threesome. 
We talked with the young folks this morning about 3-in-1 oil, the oil that lubes, cleans, and prevents rust. 3-in-1, one, one oil, three purposes, three ways of taking care of the tool or the equipment to which it's applied. Like a lot of you probably know that old name. I, I still have it in my toolbox. Oh, the whole, In the Holy Trinity, of course, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all the same substance, but different ways of relating to one another and experiencing and relating to us. The Creator, Sustainer, the Redeemer, and the one who advocates for us and inspires us and serves as our advocate. And, and that, that's the Holy Spirit. And the, in engineering, a shape of three, if it's pinned at the corners, is the only rigid, stable shape of all of them in geometry or in construction. So if you ever pass through a truss bridge, look for the triangles built into the, the structure of the bridge. <clears throat> well, there are many things I looked up, and I came up with several pages, so I, I'll try to read just a few. If you get a Jewish Bible, which we would call the Old Testament, they call the Tanakh. Torah, Nevi'im, Veketuvim. The law, the prophets, and the writings. Their scriptures in three parts. What does Paul say the three great things are in the love chapter of Corinthians? These three things abide, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love, the three. The great commandment is to love God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Three loves there, loving God, loving neighbor, not narcissism. That's love run amok. But to know yourself as well as the other, the neighbor, be a beloved child of God. Because if we are to love the neighbor as we love ourselves and we don't recognize ourselves as lovable, we don't do a very good job loving neighbors. Because we haven't accepted God's love for ourselves. That's going to be important later. The three patriarchs are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The tabernacle and the, later the temple were divided into three sections, each one in thirds of the, of the larger one. Outer court, inner court, Holy of Holies. Grain, wine, and oil were always brought as the three elements of an offering, even with the, the animal to be sacrificed with it. And in Isaiah 6, when Isaiah is in the presence of the Lord, the seraphim are shouting, Holy, 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 three times, always three. Jesus is born to three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh to symbolize the prophet, the priest, and the king. Tempted three times in the wilderness, ministered for three years. His ministry was preaching, healing, and teaching. Ask, seek, knock, he tells us when we petition God. His inner circle was of three disciples, Peter, James, and John. Peter denied Christ three times, and three times on the beach, while Jesus was cooking fish for breakfast, he said, Simon, do you love me? He asked him three times, and the third time Simon says, Jesus, you know I love you. Why? Oh, never mind. I know why. It's three times. I'm filling in a little scripture there. And three crosses on a hillside. Even jokesters, professional comedians, recognize the story of the atheist, the priest, the rabbi, walk into a bar. Or the Baptist preacher, the priest, and the rabbi go fishing. Two to set up the pattern on a third to tell the joke is, a, is an old, known pattern of humor. When God made the creation, he made the heaven, the earth, and the sea. Three major elements. And then lighted them with the sun, the moon, and the stars. Again, three. If you like physics, you know that everything comes in three forms eventually. Solid, liquid gaseous states. We live in a three-dimensional world, length, width, height. There are three primary colors in which all other colors were made and are made in art. And a computer graphics person uses red, green, blue, still a triad of colors to create the whole palette. In speech and time, we have the past, the present, and the future. Tenses. The persons are I, you, he. Or we, you, they. There are three persons of speech. 
So we have God in unity, equality, and concord, according to Augustine. There are <clears throat> many different triplet forms in music, many different trios that sing. Many famous writings are in trilogies. I love The Lord of the Rings, C.S. Lewis, The Space Trilogy, and how many others. In literature, we have figures such as Athos, Porthos, and Aramis, the Three Musketeers, before they dragged D'Artagnan into the last volume. Uh, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli from the Lord of the Rings, a man, an elf, and a dwarf, and they were normally mortal enemies. For Trekkies like me, Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. Han, Luke, and Leia, if you're a more recent science fiction buff. And of course, Harry, Hermione, and Ron from the Harry Potter series. Bambi, Thumper, and Flower from Disney. Never thought of that one. Three Stooges, the Marx Brothers, Charlie's Angels, and a good friend reminded me this last week of the Three Amigos movie. I guess they were sort of heroes by the end, comic heroes. And so on and so on with triplets in the world. And you go back to children's stories, you get three little pigs, three blind mice, Goldilocks, and three bears. And then the three witches in the old Macbeth play by Shakespeare that led to the three witches of the Hocus Pocus movie more recently, kind of spoofing fun at them. Threes, lots of threes, all kinds of threes. God wires us in threes. And I got, I got to confess to something first before I lead into the threes. My wife and daughter think I'm on the spectrum in, in ADD. I got to Asperger's syndrome a little bit. I have to work very hard at being self-aware and aware of others' reactions. It's an awful confession coming from a pastor, but it's what God has burdened me with, and I have to work at it and be deliberate about it. <clears throat> so when I grew up in Bangor, Maine, in our rather, let's say, limited culture, I had a few friends in high school, in middle school, junior high school, we called them then, who were, were not white. And they were usually Air Force families from Dow Air Force Base that was there in Bangor at the time. They weren't, weren't much of the natives. And in my household, if we said anything racist, we got to explain ourselves after we picked ourselves up off the floor. Dad had no tolerance for that. He'd been a Marine NCO, and he knew that color was, was not how to look at people. And he taught us that very, very strongly. So when I went to Boston, my senior year in high school, I was in the all-eastern chorus. And they roomed us five or six guys to a room, like bunk to bunk to bunk, in a hotel room. And a couple of the guys in the room I made new friends with were from Washington, D.C., they were black. And I probably said some stupid things in getting to know them. I don't know. But we were walking down the sidewalk to go get breakfast before the rehearsal. And here's the, a couple of the guys from my room and a couple of the gals they knew from school. They, they were all black and, and me. And after a block or two, they said, turned to me and said, Dave, we, we hate to ask this. It's not you. Um, we need to ask you not to walk with us. What did I say? What did I do? I said, look around. 1972-1973 Boston. White guy walking with a couple of black girls, and even with the, other, with the other guys along there, too. People were stopping dead in their tracks on the sidewalk to glare at us. I mean, ugly. And I had to have it pointed out to me, because as I said, I'm bopping along in my naive, innocent world. Well, I found out later, too, that a couple years later, when I was at West Point, we were plebes, and of course, as plebes, we were under quite a disciplinary system. It means peasant, by the way, the word plebe. At least one of my classmates, who was black, when he sat for a month at a table where the table commandant was a senior from the Deep South, every time they got to dinner and the command take seats was given, the, the senior said to my classmate, Pass out your plate, which means you're not eating this meal. And he was consistently denied food. Other cadets saw that he got fed <clears throat> off offline, so to speak, in the evening. But 
he was, by someone in authority, he was refused food on a consistent basis because of race. And I didn't find out till later. Dumb. I, I just had no idea. Because at that time, my, my lofty ideals of West Point were still pure and unsullied. I didn't realize that they would allow such a thing if, if the higher authorities even knew. I don't know how sneaky it was. but And then when Mary was in middle school down in Pennsylvania, a new kid came to the school. She knew what it was like to be a new kid in this culture. And she was late junior high school, probably high school by then. So she welcomed this new girl to the school, invited her to sit with her and everything else. Um, and the girl was of color. I'm not sure which one. And some boy stopped in the cafeteria and screamed at Mary that she was an N lover. I hate to use the word. There was a teacher on duty nearby, and the teacher went stone deaf for some reason. And when Kathy went to the administration of the school and said, this cannot be, they called the teachers on cafeteria duty, and the teacher said, Nothing, no such thing happened. I heard nothing. I heard nothing. And the administration turned to, to Kathy and said, well, if the, if the teacher didn't hear anything, there's nothing we can do about it. We just, you know, it's Mary's word against this other kid. And a couple of months later, I sat in a meeting with a, an expert on bullying who came to that school and listened to the administration tell them that they had no problem with any kind of ethnic resentment or bigotry in their school. So I had lunch with the man and explained the difference and told him a couple of stories of things like that. And there, there have been other things too, of course, that, that because we're talking this thing with Mary was late nineties. So it, even in my relatively sheltered world, because in the army we we're all supposed to be shades of green, although I, I sadly learned of other incidents and other situations. I served under, over, and with people of all kinds of dith different ethnicities, including a few I wouldn't have thought of when I joined the Army. I didn't think I was going to have to learn about Samoans and soccer, for example, or have a supply room full of, of guys from the Philippines, great supply sergeant and supply clerks, and other ethnicities and folks that I worked with closely or worked for or who worked for me. And we, we, had, we learned we were shades of green as best we could be, but culture slips in. Well, I say this self-awareness because I, I need to examine myself in God's mirror. There are three kinds of awareness we need in good relationships with people. The first one is self-awareness. To look at ourselves in God's mirror. We're told all the way back from Samuel that God looks on the heart, not the exterior. Well, we need to look on our own hearts, develop really good self-awareness. What are my wirings? What are my automatic? I don't even want to call it bigotry, but let's say what kind of assumptions do I come up with that I shouldn't? I probably do. To examine ourselves, Robert Burns said it well, what some power the gift he gives us to see ourselves as others see us. It would for many a blunder free us. It, it goes on. Um, so self-awareness is the first part of a good relationship. Knowing what's in our own hearts, minds, wirings, assumptions. The next piece is other awareness. We're given two ears and a mouth, so we need to listen twice as much as we talk. Hear what someone else is dealing with right now. It might be anxieties and fears about the virus. It might be anger and resentment about the uh, civil unrest and, and things coming out in our, in our nation about our culture that are, are still ugly and the, the way it acts out or the way people are reacting to it. We need to hear from others what hurt or strength or weakness or gifts or lacks what what is driving them and be aware of that when we're speaking to them not aware of what we need to tell them aware of what they're hearing from us or saying to us so good awareness of the others so we have two legs of the stool 
picture of milking stool with only two legs, though it's kind of tippy. So the third leg is awareness of God. God created both myself and the other. God wants me to be aware of what God has put before me, puts into me through the Holy Spirit, showed me through Jesus Christ, and gave me in his word. With all those things, with the teaching and preaching of the word, with the, with the written word, inspiration of the Spirit, if I will, will stop and pray, I have no excuse for not being aware of God and God's expectations and God's cares for this relationship, for these conversations. So I really need to pay attention to my heart, the other's heart, God's heart. Now I've got to go back around that circle again. This is called relational wisdom, by the way. In business, emotional intelligence is awareness of self and the other. Relational wisdom by, by Ken Sandy uh, is a program that expands that to include God so that it's a full circle, hence the name Relational Wisdom 360. Because as we are aware of all three legs of the stool, so to speak, or all the way around a circle, now we go back and we engage. As I learn to be aware of what's in my heart and mind, I have to engage with it. What do I need to work on? What, what strengths can I build on? And more important, what weaknesses or foibles do I need to break loose of? What do I need to be aware of when I relate to another about me and engage with it? Put a leash on it. Push it to the forefront. And then engage with the other. To take account of when I speak or listen, what burdens, what gifts, what hurts, what hopes and joys the other person carries and engage with them, not just be aware and ignore, but engage with, and there comes empathy, there comes the ability to, to feel with somebody and to care about what, what you feel there. And then, and hopefully he and I are both doing this, God engagement. We're aware of what God wants. Now engage with it. Wrestle with that word to love God, love self, love neighbor, and how to do it. To put the other as being at least as important as yourself. But to engage with God as well as with the other. And if we do that, hopefully we can learn what kind of hurts, what kind of backgrounds, what kind of challenges we're trying to relate to and relate with in another person and how, how our own wiring affects that. But again, it's got to be a triangle. That stable structure of self, other, and God. Aware of self, aware of other, aware of God, then engaging with that awareness to act upon it in the relationship that builds a foundation in us, I pray in our church community and our families, that we can then reach out and teach others through this application of the gospel of Jesus Christ that's called relational wisdom to help others. Can I advertise a little bit? There's an online course teaching relational wisdom, and right now it's offered without any uh, kind of fee. It's normally $49. I've had the privilege of sitting in instruction with Ken Sandy directly. He's a wonderful teacher, wonderful Christian that's suffused with the gospel and with scripture. <clears throat> and there is a way of using that online course as a weekly group study. Well, I've been through it before. I'm taking it again. I've used it a lot for years. And I would be very happy to facilitate a group and I've had a couple of folks tell me, one this morning and one online, uh, that they would like to do that. So if we get signed up in the course that next week, we can do it free of charge. So we can set a time for a week or two with Zoom, perhaps with new rules of gathering. We can meet in person or a combination thereof, set up a Zoom on a screen in a, in a meeting room or something. There's ways to do this, that we can we can go through this together because this this awareness and engagement of self, others, and God is a central model. But there's a whole lot more wonderful things to learn about how to relate to one another.
and to encourage that because we need it right now at all levels of our communities, our very society and culture. We need better to hear one another and then engage. Here is God's model through one of his teachers, I believe, to be able to apply his word, his gospel, his way to doing that. Thanks be to God for the model of the Trinity and for the teaching of his word to be able to relate well, self, others, and God. Amen and amen. We finished our worship service this morning with a celebration of the Lord's Supper. So if you're watching online, you can pause the video. If you're watching on cable TV, you can go chase the tail end of the video on, online later. <clears throat> but uh, we offer you the opportunity to share in the Lord's Supper, even if we have to do it electronically at a distance. My sisters and brothers, we are now about to observe the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. This table of the Lord is open to all Christians, and although none should partake of these sacred emblems impenitent or without faith in Christ, we cordially invite all who are sincerely seeking him to come to his table in the assurance that he who came into the world to be the Savior of all will in no wise cast them out. Come to this sacred table not because you must, but because you may. Come to testify not that you are righteous, but that you sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ and desire to be his true disciple. Come, not because we are strong, but because we are weak. Not because we have any claim on heaven's rewards, but because in our frailty and sin, we stand in constant need of heaven's mercy and help. Come not to express an opinion, but to seek a presence and to pray for a spirit. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy gave us your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made there by the one offering of himself a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you, and grant that we, receiving these your creations of the harvest of the field, and the fruit of the vine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his suffering, death, and resurrection, may be partakers of the divine nature through him. Amen. We remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat all of you. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the name of and in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ, we offer you this bread. Amen. In the same manner, after they had eaten supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. In remembrance of, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I invite you too to share in his cup. Thanks be to God. Amen.
God has nourished us with his word, with his prayer, with the Holy Spirit, and through the sharing of the symbols of his resurrection and his death, so that we might be nourished in that knowledge. Let us join in giving him thanks. We thank you, Almighty God, for giving us this meal, shared in the Holy Spirit, which sustains us with the food and drink of your life. Grace our lives, that we may at the last come to share in the heavenly banquet of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining me. I apologize that it wasn't with the music and the brothers and sisters in worship. But I pray that God can use any means we can provide to draw you closer to him, his will, and his way. God said to Moses, you tell Aaron and his sons when they bless my people to bless them in this way. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance over you and give you peace.